This is example 3, SOLIDWORKS Part Files. Okay, again we're going to begin this example with our initial assembly file open. And we want to specifically look at Part Files. We'll be looking at the body of our dump truck. So I'm going to open that body of the dump truck by simply selecting a face of the dump truck. And then in our context toolbar, I'll select open part. I could also have opened my part by selecting the part on the feature tree and selecting open part from there. Now before I get too far, I'll show you that we could also open it obviously using the standard Windows commands. But I would like to show you that there is a filter for file types and oftentimes new users will be toggled to assemblies per se and they'll say my part file was saved in this folder but it's gone now what happened to it it is important to verify that you are not filtering only assemblies or only part files but that you have all SOLIDWORKS files turned on However, if you are trying to filter just assembly parts or drawings, then that option is available. However, I did want to note that oftentimes the filter will be turned on and then users have difficulty finding the part file that they're looking for. I'm going to cancel out of this window and return to my part file. Now again we'll see that as with assembly files, part files also contain a feature tree. And In the case of a part file, the feature tree contains a list of the features used to create this part file because part files are made up of a series of features. If I were to roll back in history I could roll back to the initial feature used to create this part file. We can see this part started with one simple feature and throughout time features were added. I did just skip over several features in that jump. And again we can see throughout history the part becomes its final product. That is another powerful aspect to solid modeling is we do have a complete history of how we've created our solid. And this is unique to parametric solid modeling. Now again that is a rather simple overview of part files but we mainly wanted to note how we open a part file and that part files are made up of a series of features. Now let's just go back to our assembly file and I would like to show you multiple ways of doing so. One method of doing so would be to select a little flyout and select window and then jump to our assembly file. Now the alternative method is Instead of using Alt-Tab that switches between applications that you have open, you can use Control-Tab. That will bring up a dialog box that will switch between documents that you have open. So I'll simply select my assembly file. SolidWorks has asked me if I would like to rebuild my assembly file. And I will say yes. What a rebuild does is because this SOLIDWORKS assembly file has this part within it, when you modify a part, the assembly file needs to update the part within its assembly, and that's the parametrics working. So whenever you're asked to rebuild the part file or assembly file, simply accept unless you've made a change that you do not like. Well, that concludes the exercise on part files. You can now take a few minutes to try opening the individual part files and just browse through the feature tree to see how these individual part files were created. Again, I trust this example was a help.